Good afternoon. Um, I'm very happy to be here. I'm uh, Roberto Ascione. I'm the president for Global of Razorfish Healthware, which is uh, the merger between Razorfish Health, the healthcare side of Razorfish Agency, and uh, Publicis Healthware. And I'll be talking today about uh, uh, the merge between uh, social media, healthcare, mobile health, and this very exciting years we are living. Let me start with some uh, facts that uh, are always a good uh, way to kind of frame uh, our conversation. As you can see in these charts, um, there are some impressive uh, numbers around the way that social media is uh, uh, embracing healthcare. Um, as you see on screen, there are many reasons for people working and playing with social media and uh, mobile health, and healthcare is definitely one of the first purposes for people to use these kind of technologies. And it's not just to consume content, but it's also about the actions that people are taking as a consequence of this exposure. So in this infographic on the left side, on the right side, sorry, you can see uh, the type of things that people are doing with this uh, media or solutions or technologies, because it's a bit of the mix of all of those. Um, People not only uh, are hearing from peers, but are also changing their behaviors based on the experience that others are taking. This is among users as us, patients, but also among physicians and the different combinations of them. This, of course, is changing a lot of paradigms. And of course, we will not review today all the technologies, but we'll focus on uh, the one aspect of, of them. Let me uh, touch another, another topic. Uh, the stat that you see on the screen, I think it's rather impressive, is about the digital video. You know that uh, YouTube is the most uh, renowned example. There are many other platforms out there, but YouTube alone grows each two months as the whole broadcasting industry all over the world since the, the time that the television exists which is a huge amount of content that gets generated. Um, and the traffic, of course, that this triggers is uh, extremely significant. But here comes uh, a little bit of a, of a surprise. Um, what about the video, digital video in healthcare? The consumption of those videos is extremely high. As you can see uh, up there, healthcare is uh, um, one of the main reasons for people to consume digital videos, and it comes even before sports or even before celebrities. Um, this is uh, something that uh, a couple of years ago uh, we found rather interesting um, because to such a demand, it's one person out of three, globally speaking, that is interested in healthcare videos. There's no such an offering in terms of quality healthcare videos online or mobile available for this demand. Uh, and these videos have a very powerful uh, result because uh, much more than written content, when people experience healthcare videos, as you see in the bottom part of the screen, uh, they are more keen to take care of their own health, search for the right uh, hospital, the right doctor, and change the behavior in a favorable way. So with all this said, um, we investigated the physician side. And the physician side, it's quite similar. There are basically two-thirds of the physicians which are keen to get education about the diseases or new procedures, new drugs, through digital video rather than through uh, different formats of content. So this is another converging element that we found particularly interesting. However, of the 4 billion videos views each day, uh, most of this consumption uh, happens outside of US, which is the market that embraced the digital video first. And this is a major gap because most of the great healthcare content uh, available are mainly in English. And this creates a gap in terms of accessibility to this knowledge by vast majority of the users in terms of digital videos, which are largely non-English speakers as native speakers. 
So we thought there were a great opportunity out there because great healthcare content is not always available in uh, the language that we speak. And on the other side, there are maybe some great healthcare content produced in other languages which have to remain confined into the specific country despite that the web is global because of this lack of accessibility. So what happens? We met a startup company um, called Vidium Health Incorporated and these guys came with a great idea. We helped these guys to build up their technology and today we are helping them to leverage these technologies around the world. Um, Vidium.com, which is online uh, since few months in uh, beta, and you will see, we'll learn more today. It's a social video network, only dedicated to healthcare, which allows anyone, either users or companies, and in between hospital, patient associations, scientific societies, to upload digital videos on the web, just like you would do on YouTube, but only for healthcare, and in a way that ensures the quality of this content to the users. The other thing that it does allows these videos to go global. And how it does that? That's a screen uh, where you can see how it, uh, how it works. It leverages a exclusive subtitling technology, which basically allows either automatically or through editors to ensure the quality from any language to another any language that is spoken. So you can upload your healthcare video. This video gets uh, subtitled in the original language and then from there can be either automatically translated or can be done by uh, people on the web like on Wikipedia or by controlled authors if uh, as a company you want this to do uh, professionally. And simply speaking, you have uh, the player and uh, on top of the player you have uh, the language to select and you instantly switch to the other language. Let me show how this uh, works in practice. I collected a few cases, literally going to the platform, which as I said is in beta, and uh, looking what's going on there. This is the example of uh, a prevention uh, care agency uh, from the government in Canada. They went online, uh, created their profile, uh, uploaded several videos, and started to process these videos in ways that uh, the population in uh, the remote regions of Canada uh, were able to get this content, which is uh, about uh, uh, dialysis and prevention. And when I was playing with this, preparing this speech, I found that somebody from Turkey translated one of the videos that you see on the left side in Turkish. So there is this content that you have on the left side, which originally was developed uh, for renal prevention in, uh, in English, that has been uh, localized and made accessible there. There's another opportunity in this. As you know, search engines are the way we always access information, and especially in healthcare. It's basically all through the search engine that we go for healthcare information. And videos normally cannot be uptaken by the search engines because the engine cannot read the audio. This technology allows the video to be search optimized because the text that gets subtitled can be read by the search engine. And because of the local language, you can be sure that the content that is most relevant is the one in the language that you speak in that specific country when you started the search from. So we heard during the day multiple examples of uh, being uh, customer centric. This is uh, one of those examples. You will get the videos if available in the language that you speak, which is the language your computer is starting the search from. And this is a blog post that we found online uh, from this agency in Canada where they are basically saying uh, thanks to this technology we have been able to really reach uh, people that uh, either don't speak English or French properly because are from remote locations of Canada 
which we can think is a country that everybody speaks English and instead uh, clearly is not. Uh, not only that, but uh, this way they can have uh, their activity going abroad and in, uh, to audiences that otherwise they couldn't have reached. They are doing something quite interesting because they are interviewing people that find ways to cope with uh, uh, renal diseases uh, in a smart way. They are interviewing and publishing so that other people can take the opportunity to learn from the peers. So it's quite interesting as a, as a dynamic. Um, again, uh, playing with the platform, I selected the, the Turkish and to see what was available. And uh, to give you an idea of how this really uh, works, you see the result page. I got some uh, content that are originated uh, in Turkish, and I will go there in a moment. But also I got uh, this one, which is English, this other one, which uh, was original in uh, Chinese. This is in Indian. And this is from Italy. So all this uh, from uh, a Turkish audience standpoint couldn't have been uh, accessible um, because even if uh, uh, you are very fluent uh, in another language like English, this that originally was done in Italian wouldn't have been uh, understandable. This got published in Italian. And we discovered that a doctor from Saudi Arabia, who knows English too, did the Arabian and the English, and propagated the video around. Of course, it works from uh, global languages to local languages, and vice versa. Uh, this is uh, a uh, speech from an opinion leader on uh, hepatitis A from Turkey that has been uh, uh, transformed in, uh, in English and as such is uh, going around. And even farther, this is another example that we found. This is another key opinion leader for Turkey that got to translate it in Chinese. So it's, um, I think it's incredible how these things are taking strange paths, you know, and this content is going around the web. I think really kind of embracing what the web should mean, something that is open for people to collaborate and communicate across borders. There are many things that uh, can be done within the social network. One of those is to create uh, channels. Uh, there are already hospitals that created their channels, and through the channel they explain the techniques they use, uh, how they are organized. There are patient associations, as the renal one that you see before. Uh, this one comes uh, from Turkey, is about to go live. Actually, I think it's already live. It's uh, drcitesi.com, which is uh, uh, a portal for physicians here from Turkey, which created the channel. This portal is made by videos from uh, uh, Turkish doctors explaining different diseases and, 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 and techniques. Um, and so they created the, their channel with their brand aside of the portal. And on this one, there will be videos coming from uh, this country to the platform, as well as they are starting to choose content that are maybe done by other universities around the world and localizing and adding to their own site. These are some screens from what a channel is and uh, how basically works. You have there what you can expect from a social video community, like the comments, the related videos. The, the different thing is that it's only healthcare and is across the languages. So it doesn't matter the original language, what it was, because the system is able to go across that. I, in the beginning, I talked about medical education. This is another good example about that. This is a company which is in France and produces content in French and in English. It's called MDFM. It's like a radio. It started as a radio, then went to the web as a web radio. And it's a radio about medicine for physicians. So this one that you have on the screen is the example of a Congress report done last week at the European Society of Cardiology Congress. Uh, and uh, four days later, the video is available in a number of languages and physicians in different countries are using it. Also, they do another interesting thing. Um, each two weeks, they do an eight-minute review of the best scientific literature with uh, 
the reading of the key elements of the abstract of the scientific publication and what does that mean in clinical practice. And also that one you can find on video. And finally, video has a lot of different usages beyond uh, education, beyond uh, uh, commercial purposes, etc. Um, we have a program and we are giving access to the platform to non-profit organizations that are doing amazing projects with this. This is the example of HealthPhone. HealthPhone does something very simple. Uh, in India, this is an Indian-based organization, um, only nearly 15% of the population has access to basic health knowledge, meaning that how to wash your hands, how to breastfeed, uh, how to take care, how to cook meals, you know, the basic, basic stuff. And because of this, they have an, an unacceptable mortality in uh, 2012, which this organization tries to go against. So what HealthPhone is doing? HealthPhone is uh, shooting little videos with uh, the mobile phone in the villages, uh, and showing, not with uh, um, actors, but with the real people, how to wash your hands, how to breastfeed, how to boil a uh, vegetable before consumption, in order to simply convey one, two minutes messages to the population that normally have not access to that. Uh, in India, uh, one billion uh, people speak either Marathi or one of the other 12 uh, dialects. Each dialect is spoken by um, 100 million people, to give an idea. It's one of, uh, it's just like uh, our languages. And so they are using video that supports any dialect to basically have these videos accessible to the rural villages. And through this, they are doing this education, both on the web, on the mobile phone, and on a pre-recorded chip that they can play into uh, like DVD recorders, etc. when they have a screen and they organize meetings in the villages. And uh, Vidium is providing all the services behind this to make this happen, as in other social programs around the world. So these are a few addresses. If you want to follow us, if you want to play with Vidium, if you want to visit our website, and um, in conclusion, I think this, um, this is just one of the emerging technologies that is, I think, really helping the technology to transform the way we conceive healthcare. I think there are plenty of opportunities out there that have to be yet uh, leveraged. And uh, we like to believe that this one is uh, tackling few of the key issues. The globalization of the content, the video, the social networking aspect and the quality. Being only healthcare and uh, controlled in quality, we believe it creates a safe environment for healthcare messages to spread versus the wild west that the web is uh, with its good and its bad. Uh, with this, I thank you for your attention and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.